Today, I'm at the southerly most point of one of our most sought after rural counties. The lighthouse behind me protects ships from a rugged coastline and a fast moving current. But will it be all hands on deck or plain sailing as we escape to the country? In today's show, I'll be helping a couple find their home of a lifetime in the country. I'll be taking them on a tour of some desirable properties and things get a bit steamy. A sauna in here. Now I'm using my imagination. <laughs> I think I might have a thing to ignite your rocket. But the results go stratospheric. Houston, we have a liftoff. Fantastic! <laughs> and there's the mystery house which looks out of this world. Today I'm in Dorset and this spectacular lighthouse is the Portland Bill Lighthouse which has stood here since 1906 and it's standing on the Jurassic coastline, a world heritage site. 71 miles it stretches right the way across the Dorset coast. So you know, these rocks record over 185 million years of the Earth's history. And if that's not enough for you, well this county has a lot more to offer. Dorset is one of the maritime counties that stretches down the southwestern arm of England. It offers the best of both worlds with its Jurassic coastline and fine beaches, as well as beautiful countryside inland. With nearly two thirds of Dorset designated as areas of outstanding natural beauty, there are stunning and varied landscapes to enjoy. From the Blackmore Vale, home to dairy farming, to the chalky slopes and hedgerows of the Dorset Downs. The historic architecture of town and country is alive and well, from imposing Georgian townhouses to quintessential country cottages, with the local grey Portland stone cropping up in buildings across the county. Dorset's capital, Dorchester, is home to some notable buildings, with plans afoot for more. This building was designed by Crickmay, an architect that Thomas Hardy worked for before he became a writer. It's now part of Brewery Square, a £200 million regeneration effort to redouble and reinvigorate Dorchester Town Centre. But it's not just this building. It's actually this 11 and a half acres of space, which is going to be turned into luxury flats. There's going to be a theatre and the first solar powered train station. But if it's property that you're looking for, then take a look at some of these properties on the market right now. You could reap the rewards of this six bedroom farmhouse for one and a quarter million pounds. The kitchen and sitting rooms with their open fireplaces are large enough, but then there's 30 acres of land and wonderful countryside views to take in too. For £575,000, this three-bedroom converted Victorian coach house in Wick has a quirky grandeur with its light, spacious reception rooms and a welcoming kitchen. Outside, there's a south-facing walled garden. The character charm you could pick up is four-bedroom, grade two listed thatch cottage in the village of Preston for £350,000. The original exposed beams and stonework run throughout the reception rooms and kitchen, and there's a conservatory which leads into a landscaped cottage garden. So we know that Dorset has some beautiful properties, but will any of them suit today's buyers? Well, let's meet them and find out. Today's buyers are Sally and Jeff, who've lived in their four bedrooms. Uh, that's stunning. That's well within our budget. And I think it gives you a lot to think about, doesn't it? It certainly does. Well, go inside. There's plenty for you to have a look at. Start thinking, and I'll catch up with you later on. Right. <gasps> that shocked them, didn't it? 585 is actually under budget. They wanted space. This property gives them more rooms than they wanted, more land than they needed, and a wonderful rural location. But is it too much space for them? Under budget at £585,000, this barn conversion is a strong contender. There's a large kitchen dining room, ideal for entertaining, six bedrooms with a master ensuite, a gym room, and four acres of land. This property may not be slap bang in the heart of a village as Sally had hoped, but the potential of its huge living areas could tip the balance. I think it is a beautiful house. It's, it's very big. It's got everything that we need and more. The one thing that sold me was the gymnasium because we were really determined that we're going to have to convert a room that wasn't designed for that, whereas here we've got a room that is purpose-built as a gymnasium. The location, for me, it's slightly more remote than I would have wanted to be. I was shocked and stunned when uh, Denise told us what the price was. I think this has set the benchmark so far for me. 
This is an amazing first property to see, and I'm pretty overwhelmed by it. I thought you might have got lost in there. <laughs> you could easily. <laughs> so much to see, but that's only one property. There are more. Great. Lead on. Sally and Jeff are taking a trip down memory lane to Dorchester, where Sally was born and lived as a girl. It's a lively market town and retains lots of its historic character. One of Dorchester's claims to fame is as the birthplace and home of one of our most celebrated authors, Thomas Hardy, who wrote such classic novels as The Mayor of Casterbridge and Far From the Madding Crowd. Sally and Jeff are meeting town guide Alistair Chisholm to find out more about Dorchester's influence on Hardy's life and writing. What a lot to see. Let's head off in this direction to start. Great. OK. He was born just three miles away, came to school here, but what people sometimes forget is that he trained as an architect in the building just over here. He won prizes as an architect, and that is actually how he earned his living, until he was able to get money from his writing. After a short career as an architect and working in London, he returned to Dorchester in 1871, when he was inspired to write from what he saw in the local landscape. A prime example of this lies just outside the town centre. So here you have the hangman's cottage. And it's worth remembering that at the tender and very impressionable age of 16, Thomas Hardy witnessed the execution of Martha Brown. And this image stays with him and, of course, explains the sad ending of one of his greatest heroines, Tessa the D'Urbervilles. Hardy not only mined the local area for his writing, but also put his architectural talents to good use, designing Max Gate House on the other side of town, where he lived until his death in 1928. Now owned by the National Trust, the house is open to visitors who wish to discover what the true Hardy was like. So, yes, this is where he wrote, of course, quite a few of his books and novels and 900 of his poems. Right. And, of course, when he dies in 1928, it is decided that his ashes will be laid to rest in Poets' Corner in Westminster Abbey. But actually his heart remains literally in Dorset because that lies buried in the grave where Emma, his first wife, and later Florence, his second wife, are buried. Well, with this move being a return to Sally's roots, let's hope we can find our couple their home of a lifetime. Our next property is a halfway house in Portisham, nine miles from both Dorchester and Weymouth, so a great commute for Jeff. It's an idyllic village nestled in the Downs, with country pathways and a reviving pint on your doorstep. There's a historical nod to a different Hardy, Admiral Sir Thomas Hardy, Nelson's right-hand man, who lived here as a child and to whom this 80-foot tower is dedicated. Our property is just a stone's throw from the pub. You have your very own gated entrance to this property. Mm -hmm. very nice. Lovely sweeping driveway. Triple garage mm. there. Mm -hmm. This is the house. I like the look of that very much. Very nice. contemporary, mm -hmm. very modern looking, clean lines. A little bit of road noise, but you're going to get that in any village that you live in. Sally likes to walk to the pub there. <laughs> that Do you be good. Uh, I think that would be good. <laughs> so, you have a look? Absolutely. Let's go. Thank you. Well, the village location has pleased Sally, and I've high hopes that she'll be impressed by the inside. Now, here we come. Lots of space for you to take off muddy boots. Fairly generous and very modern entrance hallway. And that leads you through to a spacious living room. Oh, right. Very nice. Lovely fireplace. I love that surround. It's a great very fireplace, nice. isn't it? French doors out into the garden. Mm -hmm. Very warm feel to it. Oh, and, very um, nice. Is it big enough? Yes, I think so. Yes. It's bigger than our current living room. It hasn't got any nooks and crannies. That's the only thing. There's mm -hmm. no shelving or whatever. And if you think we've got lots of knickknacks and mementos, you're going to have to bring in bookshelves and display cases freestanding to do that. Mm -hmm. So you've got to think of that. Let's keep looking around and see what else there is in this house. I'm sure a spot of DIY would give Jeff the wall storage he's after. Maybe he'll be swayed by the size of the kitchen. A nice bright kitchen for you. Yes, this is nice. I like this. Bright, lots of space. I like it. I like the tile floor as well, oh, which yes. is... Ideal. There's certainly enough space to put a central island there if you wanted to. There certainly is. Now, so you're using your imagination here about what you could do. I sent some reservation from you, Jeff. Yeah, a little bit. It, it's a bit bland. There's not much character to it. You keep an open mind there, Jeff. Okay. And have a look <laughs> in here. 
Oh, right. This is hidden away, isn't it? A little study. Yes, very nice. Which could be a home office, a little snug. A little snug, exactly. Well, we're not done yet. There are plenty more rooms that lead off the kitchen. So behind this door, this house just keeps on tumbling on. Much more space through here. Wonderful utility space. And up here, we have what the current owners have as a dog room. Mm -hmm. Could be great when you get your new dogs. Or perhaps a little mini gym. Yes, it could be. However, the possibility that I saw with this is to have a sauna in here. Ah. Now I'm using my imagination. <laughs> <laughs> that brightened you up, didn't it? If this is the sauna, then perhaps you can make more of this space. And now... Ah, now you see, I would then have this as the gym. Yeah, Yes. my imagination has still yet to take off. Oh, it's on the wrong way. A little bit. A little bit, <laughs> but the fuse is fizzing, but we haven't achieved lift off. Not quite. I'm quite. going to keep working on this one, Jeff. We're going to get right. to lift off my head. Downstairs is a blank canvas, which, if Jeff and Sally really put their minds to it, could deliver the features they're after. Now, upstairs in this property, you have four bedrooms and a family bathroom. Now, here is one of the smaller, slightly smaller bedrooms, but you've got two nice sized doubles over here. So I just want to show you one of them first of all. Right, OK. Yes, it's a reasonable size room. Probably not as big as I expected. They've also got the computer stuff in here, so that takes up a good deal of space. Big window. Nice. Very light. Nice view. As yeah. a guest room, do you think it would yeah. do? Oh, yes. And the other double would also give their guests a great view. The modern family bathroom also has a separate shower cubicle. We'll go into the master bedroom, which I hope will win Jeff over. In terms of room size, I should imagine this is a bit more like it for you. Oh, that's a good size, yes. Hmm, that's nice. Looks like and a great really views. good view. Yeah, does look good. I like it. And behind here, have a look, we have an ensuite shower room. Oh, yes, good size. Storage yeah. as well. Very modern. Yeah, very nice. Nicely done. My rockets are still fizzling, but they're actually not blasting off at this Not time. blasting off. <laughs> I think I might have a thing to ignite your rockets outside. <laughs> a couple of surprises, which might just get you going. <laughs> I'm determined to earn my stripes with Jeff, so I hope he's going to like what he sees. Now, Jeff, this is for you. Outside, we have what I consider to be another room to this house. It is. It just hasn't got a roof on it, but you're right. That's exactly what it is. It's the barbecue area, it's the manly zone, and there's a gas barbecue over we're, there. We're beginning to blast off now. <laughs> Good. <laughs> we're going straight to blast off. Brilliant. This is a lovely entertaining area, I must yeah, say. It's great. Very, very smart. One of the best aspects yet. Good. Well, we're on a roll now, because oh. just over there... Have a look up there. There's a hot tub. There's the hot tub. Oh, <laughs> oh, as requested. Wow. <laughs> Wonderful. That's no. ideal, isn't it? It is ideal. It's, a it's good right spot. there. Houston, yeah. we have a lift off. Fantastic. <laughs> well, I think we're going to be really firing up into the sky when I show you the final surprise in this garden. Oh. This half acre lawned garden is a very manageable size, and I've got the perfect solution for Sally's fish pond dilemma. Oh. A river. That is so pretty, isn't it? And that's your surprise. <laughs> it's a wonderful surprise. Look Apparently, at they have trout coming through here. Actually. Really? Do they? That is super. Very, very clean. It looks lovely. Now, do we have rockets firing on all cylinders? I think we're about to go into orbit. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's your stream. We've got a hot tub. And nice over there, garden. you have a house. All of the things that we asked for. Exactly. Yes. And Loveliness. to get them in the location that I think you quite like, mm. how much do you think you'd have to pay? Maybe completely wrong, but I'm going to say £600,000. Right on your budget. Yes. That's what, what you I'm going to say. I'm going to say slightly less than that and come down to about uh, 570 570 So money to play with. Well, there's good news. This property is on the market at £550,000. Oh, is it? So even more money to play with. Mm. It's a lovely house and it's a beautiful garden and it's got everything that we've asked for. So we'll have to think about it. I think that's exactly right. Go back in, have a little think, wander around, start to imagine yourself living there mm -hmm. and then I'll catch up with you later on. OK, if you go. Thanks. As well as having space and a good price in its favour, this property also fulfils Sally's wish to live in a village. Well within budget at £550,000, it offers a large kitchen diner, 
four bedrooms with master ensuite, space for a gym and office or snug, and a half acre garden with a hot tub. Very nice house. The best feature of the house is, in fact, the garden, which is lovely. It's got everything that we, we would want. Had a hot tub, didn't have a fish pond, but had a river with its own waterfall and a bridge, which I think is just fantastic. And loved the stream at the top. Upstairs, four good bedrooms, good size master bedroom and ensuite. I think the whole package together is brilliant, but it just doesn't fire my rockets because it perhaps doesn't have that sort of character, the quirkiness, the nooks and the crannies that uh, maybe I'm looking for. Hello there. Hi. Had another good look round? Yes, we have. How's that rocket launch going? Mm, so, so, it, the launch went fine, we got into orbit, but then I think we drifted back down to Earth. Well, don't worry, because we've still got a lot more to see. OK, good. Come on. As the afternoon sun fades away, day one of our house hunt is at an end. Sally and Jeff want to up sticks from the suburbs of Surrey and make the upsize of a lifetime to rural Dorset. With a £600,000 budget, they want this move to be their very last. So far, they've seen two properties, but still to come, there's the mystery house, where downsizing would reap huge rewards. During his time as a brigadier in the armed forces, Jeff has launched lifeboats for the Royal National Lifeboat Institution. The RNLI has charitable status, and since Sally wants to continue with her voluntary fundraising work, we thought it would be a great way of combining their interests. So they're going to meet the coxswain at the Weymouth station. Sally. Hi, Sally. Nice to meet you. Yes. I'm Andy Sargent, and you've come to see a bit about our what work we do. Indeed. OK. The RNLI volunteers at Weymouth station have rescued over 2,500 people since it was established 140 years ago. The Weymouth station has two operational boats, a smaller boat for inshore waters and a 17-metre rescue boat used in open waters. How many incidents do you get called out to, Andy? That can vary from year to year, but on, on an average, between 90 and 100 services a year, and that equates out to about twice a week throughout the year. So if you have a shout, how quickly can you actually get the crew together and get going? And generally, the boats are going down the harbour within 10 minutes. Jeff and Sally are joining the crew for a routine training exercise. So it's weather gear on and time to set sail for a man overboard drill. Only this time a fender is being used, but it's a chance for Jeff to take to the helm. Now this is where we come to manoeuvre the boat to go alongside a casualty or recover people. One person who sees them go overboard will be responsible to maintain eye contact with that person at all times. The other crew will get ready to recover the person. Man overboard, starboard side, wheel hard to starboard. So he comes 60 degrees off, hard to pull. See coming round to our reciprocal course. And there he is. Brilliant. Under Andy's expert eye, Jeff steers the boat safely to the spot where the fender is then hauled in. Brilliant. Well done. Congratulations. Thank you very much. You saved right. the day. You saved your first person. <laughs> With their rescue job done, it's time to return to shore. Or perhaps this will be the first of many trips out on the water when Jeff and Sally move down to Dorset for good. Up until now, Jeff and Sally have been pretty definite about one thing. They want space and lots of it. But who needs space when you have a view like that? It's mystery house time. Our mystery property is five miles from Dorchester in the village of Sutton Poins, meaning just a 15 minute drive into Weymouth for Jeff. It's a picture perfect village with period cottages overlooking the duck pond. Set at the foot of the chalky downs, it's ideally placed for seeing the only hillside white horse carving in England with a rider. Our mystery house will challenge Sally and Jeff to rethink their lifestyle in a smaller property, but there's a huge payoff. The mystery house, I thought we could come to a point where you see the best of what Dorset has to offer. It so really is an incredible view, isn't it? Right out over the ocean and over the hills. Really is Dorset coastline at its best. At its best. Now, imagine if you could wake up every morning to views like that. Superb. It'd be pretty impressive, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, if you look just down there, mm -hmm. if you buy that property, 
all of this could be your view. And that is our mystery house. Ah, great. We've got a few steps to get down, though, for you to get there. So follow <laughs> me. OK. There's private parking at the top, and with these steps as the only way of access to this 1930s arts and crafts inspired house, they won't be needing a gym. Here we come. And straight through to the first reception room, you get to start to appreciate what this house is all about. Still with a view through the window. Exactly. Oh, yes, look at that from here. You could just sit there with a pair of binoculars or a telescope for a day, couldn't you? And just just admire enjoy the it. view. Or a lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> or I think we should deal with this straight on. It is a smaller house, mm -hmm. particularly than the other houses that we've shown you. Right. And I think you just need to take that in because what this house is about, as I say, is the wonderful location, mm -hmm. the great views, mm -hmm. and the, the lifestyle that you'd live here. It's mm -hmm. very open, you can go out for wonderful walks, you can get fit <laughs> with the stairs. <laughs> yes, you can certainly do that. So if you're looking for original features and quirkiness, this property certainly has it. If you're looking for a stunning view, I don't think you could get much better. What do you very think so fun. far? Yeah, awesome. awesome. Very, very impressed. Well, let's wander over and have a, a look at the kitchen area. It's sort of open plan, this house, and as I said, it is small, but I think it fits, it works mm -hmm. for this property. Mm -hmm. It is a lot smaller than we were looking for. I think it would take a bit of getting used to, mm. but nevertheless, um, the views, again, just maybe make it all worth it. Mm -hmm. Maybe they do. Let's keep exploring and see how you feel. Well, there are more rooms which might solve the space problem. So this would be your living room. Nice. Open nice. fire again. Yes. Can Quite small. It? it is small. I'll take a bit of squeezing to get the furniture <laughs> in. Exactly. A bit of cutting off the edges. <laughs> or maybe... But doable. ...just starting again. Yeah. Perhaps nice. this move to Dorset for you could be... A fresh start. Yeah, exactly. Maybe. But I do like the feel of the house itself. It's got a real cosy feel which is nice. Next door, there's another room currently used as a music studio, which would make a perfect snug. Now we'll head upstairs and admire the original features on the way. This staircase, as I said, is that arts and crafts movement staircase, all that lovely wood, the great window there. Very long lesson, lots of lights. That brings you up to the upper level. Now, you've got the same amount of space up here, but you do have, in total, four bedrooms. Along this way, first of all, I think very cute. Family bathroom, have a look in. Mm -hmm. It's nice and bright, isn't it? Mm. Yes, yeah, nicely done. Over this way, the toilet is separate. I love this little feature here, little port oh. window. This is your light being in a trip again, isn't it? It is. <laughs> and if you were going to show off to your friends, you might want to put them in here if they came to stay. Nice. I like this room. Mm. Yes, it's bright light, isn't it? Again, a lovely view out. That could, could be, be really spot on nice. your guests. Mm. Off the landing, there's another bedroom for their weekend visitors to enjoy. There's also a through room into the master bedroom, which could convert to a useful dressing room and master ensuite. And this is back into the extension added by the current owners. It does look good. And it all matches very nicely. I think it's a lovely house and it has been very, very well looked after. For me, it, it does feel small. The views certainly are just stunning and that uh, stands for a lot. Well, let's see if those spectacular views can work their magic on Jeff and Sally as we stroll down through the terrace garden. So down here is your garden. Lovely and quiet, actually. Mm. It's a nice, quiet garden. Very private. It's very private. Certainly put a hot tub maybe down here. Oh, Ooh, yes, <laughs> that's a good idea. <laughs> Tucked away in that corner, perhaps? I think that would be pretty good. Mm -hmm. But over there, you can see, strategically placed, is a picnic table. That's because there's a little gate there. That gate opens up and leads you straight through. There's a public right-of-way oh. running across the fields running behind us. And it's a nice. wonderful walk. Yeah, that is it's good. Walking to the nearest village, off to the shops, mm -hmm. in about 10 to 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. If you're going to have new dogs, That's where better knowing. place to have them for mm -hmm. lovely walks? I know this house is smaller. It doesn't come with the gym and some of the added extras that you wanted. I've got to say, with all of this available to you, mm -hmm. you'd get plenty of exercise anyway, wouldn't you? In different ways. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But as you said, it's a compromise between the views which you won't get anywhere else mm -hmm. and this, you know, um, smallness mm -hmm. of the house. Mm -hmm. We would have to adapt to fit in here mm -hmm. and I think you're never going to get the 100% success solution. It's just a matter of balance. How much do you think it's worth? Mm. 
I think it's difficult because it has that beautiful view. It's a very attractive house. I'm going to go for 550,000. I'm going to head my bets a little bit and say a little bit less than that, 535,000 pounds. So quite a lot under your budget. Mm. Mm. Well, you're both right, but you're both wrong. It is under budget, but not that much under budget. It's uh. on the market for £575,000. OK. All right. What do you mm -hmm. think? Yeah, it's a good price. I mean, I can see why it is that price, because it does have so many redeeming features, and it is a very attractive house. A little bit the best of both worlds, if yeah. not a bit smaller. Yeah. Yes. But there's still enough for you to go and wander around, so head back up those stairs. <laughs> have a look around the we'll property and I'll see you later on. We're OK. Off. Well, there you go. That's our mystery house. Uh, designed to stretch them a little, make them think about a different lifestyle. Is it for them? Who knows? All I do know is that's one spectacular view. If Sally and Jeff take the downsize option with this arts and crafts thatched house, they'd be under budget at £575,000 and get an open-plan kitchen living room, four bedrooms and wonderful views of the Dorset countryside. It's also walking distance to the village for Sally and just three miles to Weymouth for Jeff's work. The Mystery House offers such a fabulous view that you could just not get anywhere else. It is totally unique. We talked about having some sort of change of lifestyle and I think we would need to do that if we were going to live here because it is definitely smaller than we were thinking of getting. If you look at the space here, it's probably even smaller that we already have. From an entertaining point of view, it would be not as easy to manage as we would have hoped for, I think. It's doable, but yeah. catering for 10 people and perhaps six of whom are staying might be a bit tight. Very much thinking about Dorset and an escape to the country feel about it. It is the Dorset dream. Ha-ha, <laughs> had to use this bell, couldn't resist it. <laughs> now, are you ready for the stairs? We'll try. <laughs> Good. <laughs> We've got plenty to get up, lots to think about and decisions to make. OK. <laughs> Sally and Jeff's house tour of Dorset is over, leaving them with plenty to think about. After over 30 years in the army, Jeff is used to making decisions and giving orders. But Sally, she's used to ruling the roost. And now they have to make a decision together. What will they come up with? We've been on not quite a military operation, but it's certainly been a journey, hasn't it, <laughs> the last couple of days. Lots of properties and lots to talk about, so it's time to go through them. Now, we started with that barn conversion out in Kingston Russell. What did you think of that one? It was the wow factor. There were so many nooks and crannies and the big beams upstairs, I thought were just fantastic. I love it. Yeah, quite an incredible property, really. <laughs> it wasn't close to a village, it was quite remote, really. Now, I guess for me, that was probably the one thing that I wasn't so sure about, because I've always said, I want to be close to the heart of the village. That would be a real compromise for me. Let's talk about the property with the hot tub. I mean, that's quite an unusual thing to have on your wish list. I must say, I really didn't think that you would come up with a property that actually had a hot tub. So it had a lot of super features. What did you think of it, Jeff? It had a beautiful garden, but the house was a bit square and angular. It didn't have the nooks and crannies and the angles and the beams. I just felt it lacked that bit of character. Well, finally, the mystery house, always designed to throw a curveball into the situation. We know you said you wanted size. It was definitely smaller, but it had fabulous views. What a dilemma to have such wonderful views that you could just sit there and watch forever through the binos. You couldn't ask for a better view. But the house itself was just a little bit too small for us, I think. I think it would really mean a complete change of the way we even approach the lifestyle that we've got at the moment. So it would be a real challenge, I think, to even consider that house. And we just want that extra space. And I think uh, certainly one of the properties we've seen this week will give us that opportunity. Which one of those properties do you think could be it for you? The old barn. 
I think, was the one that fired my rockets the most. What I would like to do is to go back, see how long it takes me to walk into Winterbourne Abbas, for instance, and maybe then decide whether I can make that compromise. <laughs> Jeff, how are you going to persuade her? We're going for a walk next week. <laughs> Get your hiking boots out, kid, because here we go. I really hope that it all works out well and you've finally found your perfect daughter at home. We've really enjoyed the journey with you and I wish you luck. Thoroughly enjoyed the time. Thanks. What a journey. Jeff seems pretty sure where him and Sally are going to end up, but I still think that Sally might just pull rank and make a different decision. I'll see you next time on Escape to the Country, but until then, company dismissed. <laughs>